Hi folks, Mr. Long here. Um, we're going to do a screencast on solving exponential equations. Uh, what's the first thing we should do? Uh, I guess we should probably figure out what logarithms are, just briefly. Um, so I'm going to press some buttons here and see what happens. Um, I'm going to take the logarithm of 100. And you can see that that works out to 2. Mm, what about the, whoops, what about the logarithm of 1,000? That's three, huh, three zeros. What about the logarithm of, I don't know, one-tenth? That's point one, right? Negative one. Hmm. Um... What about the logarithm of 1? 0. Okay, so let's take a look at that, sort of summarize that, and see if we can come up with uh, what it is. So if I go over to here to this page, notice that we did the logarithm of 100, and we got 2. Uh, also notice that 10 to the 2 equals 100. It's a nice 100. Um, we also know that, I don't think I did this, but the log of 10 is equal to 1. We also know that 10 to the 1 equals 10. And then we did 0.1 or 1 tenth, right? The log of 1 tenth or the log of 0.1 was negative 1. Well, look at that. 10 to the negative 1 equals 1 over 10. And we could have had here exponent 1. So it looks to me like the logarithm... It's just the exponent you put on 10 to make a number. Okay, it's the exponent you put on 10 to make a number. So what is the log of 16? And then what does that mean? Oops, let's go back to here. Logarithm of 16. 1.204. 1.204. So 1.204. Well, what does that mean? That 10 to the 1.204 equals 16. So anywhere where I have the number 16, I can replace it with 10 to the 1.204. Whoops. 10 to the 1.204. Those are equivalent representations. Okay. No different than I could do this. Right. I'm going to. This is up in the right corner. I could say that 4 squared equals 10 to the 1.204, okay? So those are equivalent. They just both represent 16. They're both worth 16. So a logarithm, uh, when you press the logarithm button in the calculator, it just gives you the exponent you put on 10 to make a number. Okay, that's all it is. It's actually quite a simple concept. So it's just that there you get weird numbers like 1.204. And you have to remember your benchmarks, by the way. I want you to focus on your benchmarks of this. These are the ones that are most important. Log of 10 and log of 0.1. So you know that um, 10 to the 1 is 10, but 1 tenth is 10 to the minus 1. So logs of numbers that are below 1 will be negative. So logs, logs that are above of numbers that are above 1 will be positive. Okay. So let's actually start solving an exponential equation. Here we go. So we're going to solve this equation right here. 200 multiplied by 2 to the exponent of x divided by 5 equals 300 divided by 2, or multiplied by 2 to the exponent x divided by 6. So in other words, this one is doubling. This one is doubling. You start with $200 and it's doubling every five years. Think of this as money, right? You start with $200, it doubles once every five years. In this case, we start at $200, it's repeatedly multiplying by 2, repeatedly doubling, and it's once per 6 years. It doubles once per 6 years. Well, when we saw these equations uh, this year, I want to remember that guessing and checking is equivalent to this. I'm just teaching you an algebraic strategy. Um, so remember that when you solve these equations, probably the first thing you need to do is to convert them into percent form. So that's the first thing we'll do. Let's get it in percent form. So what I need to do is, I've got 200, and then I'm going to multiply that by the fifth root of 2 to the exponent of x. And then it's going to be 300 multiplied by 
to, whoops, the sixth root. Huh. Let's erase that. Try that again. The sixth root of 2 to the exponent of x, right? So there's my sixth root, there's my fifth root. Okay, we learned that earlier in this unit. That's called the index of the radical, right? The index. So what I need to do is use my calculator and get the fifth root of 2. So let's go back and take a look at how I might do that. So go back to there, hit clear. And what I'm going to pick is there's a button called the n root. Right, there it is there. Um, so we're going to do the sixth root of 2. And that means what number multiplies by itself six times to make 2? Six times in a row, 1.122. Okay, I'm going to go to always three decimal places. Oh, that was on the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to rewrite this as 200, and then the fifth root of 2 works out to... 1.149 to the exponent of x, and that will equal 300 multiplied by 1.122 to the exponent of x. Okay, now we have the situation where we start at, I've got something starting at $200 and it's growing by almost 15%, and then I have $300 that's only growing by 12, about 12%. So eventually, the $300 uh, or initially, rather, the $300. You'll start with more money at $300 versus $200, but it's the $300 grows, grows at a slower rate. It's only 12%, whereas the other one's almost 15%, 14.9. Okay, now we need to solve this. So what we're going to do is collect, um, let's see, one. I want to get um, these terms here. I'll, I'll highlight them. I want to get these terms right here, the terms with the base and the exponent on one side, and then I want to get the coefficients on the other. And it's just like a linear system where you get the constants on one side and the x's on the other. Okay, but these aren't these aren't constants, they're coefficients because they multiply into something. So 200 and 300 are going to go on the right side. The x terms are going to go on the left. And the reason is because 1.149 is bigger than 1.12. 1.149 is bigger than 1.122. So what we're going to do is we're going to Divide both sides by 1.122 to the x, and that's division. And then we're going to divide both sides by 200. Okay, so when I do this, my next line down, so I'm dividing both sides by 1.122. So that gets rid of that from that side, so it's going to be 1.149 over... 1.122. Now notice they're both to the x, so I can make a single x there, right? Like, remember we did this top right, folks? 2 to the 3 over 5 to the 3 would equal 2 over 5 all to the 3. Okay, all to the 3. So I can just write it as a single exponent. Okay, now I need to divide both sides by 200. Right, from my operation here, so 200, and that gets divided on the other side, so 300 divided by 200. Uh, cross out the zeros, cross out the zeros, so 3 divided by 2, which is 1.5. So I now have this equation. And what I need to do is, since I've got a variable in the exponent, I need to take the logarithm of both sides and represent them in um, with, with logarithms. So let's go to the next page. So I need to find a way of saying 10 to the something equals 1.5. I need to find a way of saying 10 to the something equals 1.149 divided by 1.122. Let's check that out in the calculator and see. I'll just do the 1. So uh, I'll clear that. So we have 1.149. Uh, whoops, I need to take the logarithm of that. Logarithm brackets 1.149 divided by 1.122 and bracket equals 0 0.0103 or 0 0.010, three decimal places. Okay, so I know that this one is 0 0.010. 
you know what, this time I'm going to go to four decimal places, 0 0.0103. And then I need to do, get the logarithm of 1.5 as well. Point one seven six one point one seven six one because point one seven six zero nine point one seven six one seven six one. Okay, so now I can change those representations. So remember that I had. Let's go back and take a look. I had one point one four nine to the x and one point five. Now I can change that. To something a little bit different. 1.149 over 1.122 to the x equals 1.5. Now I'm going to change each of these numbers to having a base of 10. Okay, so this means 10 to the 0 0.0103. But I've also got the x, right? I've got the x here. Okay, so I need to keep the x there. And that will equal, and what's 1.5 worth? Well, 1.5 is worth 10 to the 0 0.1761. 10 to the 0 0.1761. And now I have a really simple case where I know that 10 and 10 are equal. And since I've got an equal sign in between them, I know with absolute certainty that this exponent and this exponent are equal. And that's why it's really nice to have, use the logarithm to get a like base on both sides, because 10 equals 10. So 0.013x equals 0 0.176. 0 0.0103x equals 0 0.1761. And I need to divide both sides by... 0 0.0103. And when I'm all done, when that's all said and done, I'm going to get x equals 17.5. Okay, 17.5. So notice uh, when I did it in class, I only went to three decimal places. Going to four decimal places is a little bit more helpful. And hopefully that rounding works out. So just one more page. I think what I'm going to do is just draw a quick sketch of it. Um, so, and which I should have done at the start, right? So if you look at this and think of it as money, we had one equation starting at 200, and another one starting at 300. But if you notice, the one that started at 200, it was growing by almost 15% a year. The other one was growing by 12.2% per year. Well, 14.9% growth will be much steeper than 12.2% per year. So we ended up with an intersection point here of 17.5 years, okay, if this was money. And then I just back substitute into one of those two equations to get the amount of money. Okay, folks, so that's what that means. So that's the process for solving the equation of, what was it? 200 multiplied by, and I'm just going to do the decimal form, 200 multiplied by 1.149, the exponent of x, being equal to 300 times by 1.122 to the x. Okay, And we solve that equation for x by getting what's called a common base. So what you should do, folks, is go over this video if you need to, step by step, to take a look.